What I was trying to do in this piece is I was trying to look, uh, to, to embody and to perform over those two hours the, um, the sensation of freezing, like the moments when somebody uh, has to deal with a microaggression and, and then you freeze. Like no matter how many years you've been trained to deal with this, like no matter how many years you've been like dealing with racism or like sexism or trans misogyny, but you still, there are still those moments, particularly in institutions where there are very visible dynamics of power, where something happens, the slightest, most well-intentioned microaggression but still a microaggression and you just freeze and and in that moment your, your body freezes like your body just freezes but then you can feel the movement you can just like feel everything going up and down left to right in your body because things are moving but to the deepest you, but you're frozen even like in your bones you're frozen in your bones you're frozen in your bone marrow but emotionally you're, you're moving you're actually moving so um, what I wanted to do in this piece was to explore uh, that notion of freezing. So I, I was caught in, in, the, in this art installation, like in all the wires, and, and as the performance went on, I just moved like really, really, really slowly, like feeling, ev feeling every single bone, every single ligament in my body to really try to, to portray and embody uh, that pain, actually, that, 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 that deep pain in that moment when you just freeze and it's painful, but there's nothing you can do. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to, to embody in this space. In, in this piece, it was really that notion of being trapped. Um, and uh, so there was also an um, interaction piece, actually, element to this performance. So the audience uh, who was uh, coming could engage with the piece by specifically thinking about a moment uh, in their lives where they faced a microaggression, they experienced a microaggression in an institutional setting or in a university setting. Um, and what they would do is they could write that narrative that anecdote, that moment on a piece of paper and then they roll it and then they come into the space and they're invited to take a deep breath, they just take a deep breath and then when they breathe out they let go of everything they need to let go of and they also let go of that testimony and they leave it in the piece as a testimony to continue living uh, in, the, in the installation. Uh, so there was also that aspect. So what I wanted to do with this piece really were like I think two things. One, I wanted um, to create a space to talk about microaggressions at McGill University specifically in institutional settings because they, they're very common but because of power dynamics we don't talk about them, we can't really address them and I wanted to, to create a conversation to first of all bring that loneliness and tell other people who are in this building, who are in this university, who have experiences of marginalization that hey actually those things happen and we, we, they, we should find space to find each other and talk about it so at, at least naming that it happened so I wanted this to be like a physical space uh, that actually names it um, and then I wanted this piece to also be um, uh, be that, that, that extension, you know, like I, I really wanted to embody the pain and the difficulty and the sadness and the stress uh, of having to deal with microaggressions on an ongoing basis, particularly when you think spaces, educational spaces should be safe, but actually they're not a lot of times. So I wanted to, to, to create, because the person, like, it's only the person experiencing the microaggression who knows what it feels in the body. So I wanted to, which is why I wanted to do this piece, because I think it opens up that experience to other people. Other people can have a glimpse into that experience of how that, that feeling of being restricted, of, of, of not being able to move, of being frozen, and just being extremely distressed in the process. So that's kind of what I wanted to, to embody with, the, uh, with this piece. It happened in the Faculty of Education at McGill University, um, between two doors, which I think is exciting because it, it's that liminal space between inside and outside where people go through, um, you know, and I think about universities uh, as that too. It's that for marginalized people who manage to get in their head, it's like you go through there and then you get out after four years, normally with a lot of trauma or PTSD or um, a lot of mental health problems. Uh, there's been numerous, numerous, numerous documentation and research done on the relationship between microaggressions and, uh, and PTSD or mental health issues and I think that's something we need to start talking about and I'm hoping that this piece actually starts that conversation um, allows people to start talking about it more talking about the impact of microaggressions and our responsibility right like each another's responsibility to actually take care of each other and, and make sure everybody's safe in uh, institutions of learning so 
good. That's what I wanted this piece to be. That moment when somebody whom you're supposed to trust instrumentalizes your race so they can collect liberal points, feel good about themselves. Or that meeting in a room full of feminists where you get misgendered five times and nobody seems to notice or care. So you look down, you dissociate. You run away from the crime scene so you don't have to see your body traced on the ground with a taut neck hard like rubber, two knots lodged in between your shoulder blades, needles in each of your ligaments. You freeze, you freeze, you freeze. No matter how many times you have shouted angry slogans at anti-racist demos and rallies all over the city, no matter how many times you have eloquently explained intersectionality to an auditorium of 350 millennials, no matter all the 101s, 201s and 301s you have facilitated, your tongue twists itself like a snake clogged in your throat, your body grasps for air and you freeze, you freeze, you freeze.